And so slip ring can be quite variable in cost depending on where you are. So in my marina, it is actually quite affordable. I am paying about Welcome to the Aquaculture Channel. Featuring my 1989 44-foot DeFever offshore cruiser. And myself, Ashley Ringlespa, aka Captain Butch. Join me as we perform some boat maintenance and repairs and enjoy the benefits that come with this amazing lifestyle. I have been living aboard for the last 12 years and I look forward to sharing with you what I have learned and the experiences that happen along the way. This is the Aquacultured Life. Hey there Aquaculture people, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me yet again. I have uh, received quite a few questions recently regarding what my monthly overhead costs are. I have covered in previous videos mostly my three-part boat tour series, say that three times fast, um, on what my repair and maintenance costs have been over the last six years. And of course, I've got my generator rebuild video, which has got some nice costs buried in there. So if you haven't seen those videos, you might wanna check those out because I think they're quite informative and transparent on what I've spent on this boat thus far. Uh, but what I have not covered are my monthly costs as it relates to my slip fees, insurance, electric, all that good stuff. So that's what we're gonna be covering in this next video, which will hopefully hold you over until I post the next videos. Uh, thanks so much for your patience. Sometimes it takes a bit of time for me to put the next videos out. And that leads me to the next housekeeping item, which is if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so, hit that bell so you know when I do post the next videos. Throw me a like if you're so kind. Drop a comment with any questions or comments. It's kind of redundant uh, that you might have. And of course, follow me on Instagram. That is aqua underscore cultured. Don't forget the D on the end. That is on Instagram, aqua underscore cultured on Instagram. Follow me there, I post all the time and you'll see a lot of content that does not make it to my YouTube channel. And uh, <laughs> I should have been talking about this well before the holidays, but if you would love to have some aquacultured apparel, there is a website for that that you can go and purchase your own goods there. You will find that I've got some pretty sweet t-shirts with the aquacultured logo on there. There are stickers that you can put on your water bottle or whatever else you want to do. There are rash guards, sweatshirts, hats. I think I even have a tote bag on there. So go check out the website, aqua-cultured.com. It's right here. Okay, so first up, let's talk about slip rent. So you got your boat. Now, where are you gonna put it? So you can either put it behind your house or a friend's house, or you put it in a marina. Most of the time, you're going to need to find a marina to put your boat in, uh, especially if you're gonna have a home port like me, which is in St. Petersburg, Florida, in the Tampa Bay area. And it can be quite challenging finding a marina to put your boat, especially if you are a live aboard like myself. Some marinas do not allow live aboards, while others do. Some marinas that do allow live aboards only allow like maybe five or six of them in the marina at a time. And there are sometimes costs added on for live aboards to cover, you know, cleaning the bathrooms and lounges and having other resources available for you like laundry and having a pump out system like a pump out boat like I have that will come and pump you out once a week. And by pump out, I mean pump the waste out of your boat. And so slip rent can be quite variable in cost depending on where you are. So in my marina, it is actually quite affordable. I am paying about $13 a foot for my base slip rent and that's for a Florida resident rate. So at about $13 a foot, that means that I'm paying around $577 every month for my base slip rent. That includes tax. So on top of that is a liveaboard fee, which is about $208. And then I have a dock box behind me on my dock, which I pay an additional fee for, which is about $11 a month. So total, I am at about $822 for my slip every month. 
So that $822 does cover a pump out boat that pumps me out once a week. Of course, there's gated security. There is 24 hour security that walks around the marina to make sure everybody's safe. There's laundry facilities, bathroom showers, all that good stuff as well. So like I said, this is a pretty economical marina. It's a municipal facility. It takes quite a bit of time to get into this marina. Uh, I waited about two years to get in here. Sometimes they're not even putting new people on the wait list, so it can be kind of difficult to get in here. And so at other local marinas, you'd be paying anywhere between $1,500 to $2,000 a month for a boat of this size. So definitely lucky to be in this marina. It's in a wonderful spot here. So what my slip rent does not cover is my electric, but it does cover water, of course. That's usually included wherever you go. Some marinas will include electric in your slip rent, uh, but this marina does not, so you set up an account with Duke Energy and you are metered individually for your electric, which my electric costs range from $50 a month in the winter time all the way up to close to $280 a month in the summertime when I'm blasting my air conditioning pretty much 24-7. And then also I do have cable hookup so that I can have high speed internet and cable television, which adds on like another $120 a month, I believe, or $130 a month, something like that. So the next up is insurance. Uh, a lot of marinas will require that you have insurance. Amazingly, this marina does not require it, which I'm kind of blown away by, but I'm much more comfortable having insurance although it is quite costly and it's getting more costly every year that goes by. We'll see what happens next year after we've had this crazy hurricane season with uh, Hurricane Ian and Nicole. Uh, but it is becoming more and more difficult to insure liveaboards and older vessels. So when I first bought this boat, I was paying close to $4,000 a year for insurance. And now I am paying about $6,100 a year and it is covering less and the deductibles are higher. Luckily, it does cover named storms, although the deductible for named storms is crazy. And I am covered for cruising all the way from the Panhandle down to the Keys and the Bahamas, and I think even the Turks and Caicos. So that comes to about, I think I'm paying about $508 a month for my insurance. One thing that you need to keep in mind is that your insurance provider will require that you have an out of the water survey done every several years before they will renew your policy for the following year. So it's best to plan that for when you're gonna do your routine maintenance out of the water, your bottom job, whatever you need done so you don't have to pay an additional cost just for an insurance survey. And I think the last time I had an out of water survey, it was around five or $600. I would like to take a moment to mention a new product sponsor, Better Boat. Better Boat is a family-owned business that offers a full range of boat cleaning products and boat care accessories. A big part of boat ownership is keeping your vessel clean and shiny, and it is great to have an affordable, high-quality line of products provided by Better Boat to keep her ship shape. A few of the products I am particularly fond of are the medium bristled deck brush with extendable handle, the sturdy boat erasers for taking care of tough to remove blemishes, and the non-slip finished deck cleaner which does a fantastic job keeping my newly refinished non-skid decks looking amazing. I have a link below so that you can see what great stuff Better Boat has to offer. Now let's get back to the video. And another cost that I have on a monthly basis is having the hull of my boat and running gear cleaned underwater. So I pay a dive service to come and do that on a monthly basis. And in the summertime, it's actually happening twice a month because we get such crazy growth here in the Tampa Bay area. And of course, it all depends on what bottom paint you have. I know some uh, bottom paints are better at uh, keeping the, the growth and biofouling down. Uh, but my boat requires cleaning pretty much on a regular basis, especially in the Tampa Bay area where you've got a lot of barnacle growth and a lot of crazy algae. So, but hey, I know a lot of people will clean their own hull and don't mind getting in the marina water and getting all the little critters all over you and spending the time scrubbing and scraping on the hull. And also it does give you a peace of mind seeing your uh, bottom and running gear yourself. So again, this is another cost that has gone up over the years. When I first started having my hull cleaned, I was paying around $88 a month. Then it kept going up from there and now I'm at about $118 every time they come out to clean my hull. So if I'm having them come out twice a month, 
That is $236 a month to have my hull cleaned. In the winter time when the water is cooler and there's less, less growth going on, then I'm paying the $118 a month. And then every so often you're gonna need your zincs uh, changed, your sacrificial anodes, so you gotta factor that cost in as well. And then finally, this may or may not apply to you, but that is if you need a loan for your vessel. So I do have a loan on this boat, uh, which I pay about $905 a month. And getting a loan can be challenging for an older vessel, which is kind of crazy because there's a lot of older boats that are in just as good, if not much better condition than a newer boat. It all depends on how they've been maintained, but the lender doesn't really care. And of course, the lender and the insurance provider are gonna care if you are a live aboard or not, uh, which can definitely be a little bit more problematic, but it's best, of course, be honest about that up front. And the lender that I use is USAA, which they're great for lending for older vessels, which it's very difficult for anybody to finance anything over 20 years old. But hey, if you can buy your boat outright, I definitely recommend that. It'll give you a lot more money to maintain, repair, and cruise your, with your vessel. But I chose to finance a boat and get what I really wanted, which was this DeFever 44, which I needed the financing to make happen. So that brings a grand total of $2,400 to $2,700 per month that I pay for my overhead cost. And I just remembered something as I was editing this video. Obviously, I've changed my shirt and it's darker in here because it's a day later than I uh, was filming the earlier clips. But anyways, I know I'm going to get asked about fuel costs. I didn't really include fuel costs in here because that is highly variable on how you use your boat. And one thing that you need to remember is if you are out, are out cruising and you have a home port, a lot of the time you've got to keep paying for your slip back at home so that you have it when you get back. Some marinas will let you cruise and they'll rent out your slip and not charge you while you're gone, but this marina here, I'm gonna get charged no matter what. So that's another thing that you need to consider. And of course, when you're out cruising, it all depends on how economical your boat is, if you got solar panels, how much you're using your generator, if you're going into marinas a lot or anchoring out a lot. So I didn't really get into that because it is so highly variable. Thanks so much for joining me once again. I really appreciate it. And of course, thanks so much for your patience, waiting for the next videos to come out. I am working on the next ones, which will hopefully come out next month. I will be giving you a tour of that Hatteras motor yacht that I alluded to in the last video, which I gave you the tour of Who's Your Daddy. If you haven't seen that, definitely check that beautiful vessel out. I actually think that they are closing on the sale on that boat as we speak. And then I'm going to have a video about the delivery trip for that Hatteras that we delivered from Fort Lauderdale up to the Tampa Bay area in which we cut across the state through the Okeechobee Waterway, which is a very interesting route to take. So I hope that you would be interested in seeing that. And if you are, make sure you hit that bell so you know when I post the next videos and check them out. And remember, if you're not floating, you're sinking. So stay afloat, my friends. See you next time. Coming soon, I am going to take you on a trip across Florida's Okeechobee waterway system as I help deliver a 64-foot Hatteras motor yacht from Fort Lauderdale to Tampa Bay, Florida. There were some sloppy seas, beautiful scenery and interesting sights, and of course some minor issues, so stay tuned because you don't want to miss it. So currently we are in Pine Island Sound, so this area was a whole different world. Hurricane Ian was coming through, and it's pretty eerie being out here. No boat traffic, we're pretty much all alone out here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.